Welcome to Electron Online. Now let's find out what we mean by the RMS current, the root mean square current. Well, essentially, the effective current and the RMS current is one and the same. How do we find out what the RMS current is or how do we find what the I effective is, the effective current? Well, there's a way to mathematically calculate that. So here we're going to show you a simple example and then we're going to show you the general formula of how to do that for any sort of current representation. So let's say we have a simple sinusoidal current like this and let's say that we're going to sample that current at regular intervals. At 1 8 of a period, notice that the angular frequency of the current is equal to 2 pi times the frequency and the period is 1 over the frequency such that it's 2 pi over omega, the angular frequency. So we take the period of one cycle of the current and we snip it into eight equal pieces and at each point we're going to figure out what the current value is where one is the maximum current so I here or I max maximum current is re represented by one so after one eighth of a period the current is the square root of two over two after two eighths it's one after three eighths is the square root of two over two after four eighths or halfway through the period we're back down to zero now we get the negative values after 5 eighths it's minus the square root of 2 over 2 after 6 eighths it's minus 1 after 7 eighths it's minus the square root of 2 over 2 and then again if we then complete the whole period we get back to 0 by definition the RMS current or the effective current is equal to the square root of the value of the current at each one of those intervals I1 so we start with I1 over here I2, I3, I4, I5, I6, I7, I8 we square those values, add them all up, then divide that by the total number of samples that we took, and take the square root of that, and that then gives us the RMS current, or the effective current that affected that equivalent DC current. So trying that with these eight values, the effective or RMS current is equal to, it will be 0 squared plus the square root of 2 over 2 squared plus 1 squared and so forth. We take all eight samples, we square the value of each, we divide it by the total number of points, that then becomes 0, 1 half, 1, 1 half, 0, 1 half, 1, and 1 half, plus 1 half. So that would be the 8 sample points divided by 8. Sum them up, we get 4 over 8 or 1 half, take the square root of that, and we get the square root of 2 over 2 or 0 0.707, which by now should be a familiar value. So essentially, the effective current or the root mean square current is equal to the square root of 2 over 2 times the maximum current. Remember, in this example, the maximum current was 1, but if the maximum current is 2 or 3 or 4, we simply multiply that times whatever that maximum current is. So in general, we just call the maximum current times the square root of 2 over 2, or 0 0.707 times I max, which is therefore the effective current. So we have an AC current, the equivalent effective current, in other words, the equivalent DC current that will give us the same power delivered to the load can be calculated by using this formula and that formula is called the root mean square formula. We just take every value, we square every value, we divide it by the total, that's the average, of the squares and then we take the square root and hence the name root mean square. We take the root of the mean of the squared values of the samples of the current. That's another way of saying that. And so now, of course, if we take eight samples, we, we may not get the exact root mean square value. It just happens so that it works out exactly here. But essentially what you want to do is you want to take more samples. You want to take a hundred or a thousand or a million or a billion or an infinite number of samples. Of course, when you take an infinite number of samples, now we're talking about using the integration instead of the summation of n number of points. If we then use the integration method, then we get the exact value of the root mean square. If we use the summation value with a limited number of points, you may not get the exact root mean square. You may get something that's close, but at least this shows us how the method works. And in the next videos, we'll show you how to use the method using the integration equation rather than using the summation equation. But here, at least when we do it this way, you get a better feel, a better understanding of what we mean by root mean square which essentially then is the same as the effective current of an AC circuit. And that's how it's done.